Finally, in the early 1990s, a woman joined the ranks of the BMW Art Car Series. Not any woman, of course, but an artist from the Endebele tribe of South Africa. The colorful ornaments that she painted onto the car seem very structured. But, as she ensured us, she could have done anything with the car. The All Around the World Tour continues. The 12th art car has been designed by African artist Esther Malangu. Esther Malangu is one of the most famous internationally known painters. The, uh, Esther Malangu has a very, very confident, strong personality. As in the Bela culture knows no writing, art means a lot. From time immemorial, it was up to the women to design the walls of tribal homes according to their mood. And for the Ndebele people, if you begin to paint a wall, it means you are either announcing a wedding or a celebration. When she did the car, she was really looking at the car like a house. Malangu rises to the challenge of transferring her traditional art onto a modern carrier, the car. With this, she combines two worlds. And I have been asked, how did you paint? Did you use paper? Did you design the motive first? And I said, no, the design is here in my head. <laughs> Some critics accused her of not being able of doing it, and I found that really courageous of her. This car worked out nicely for me. I was so happy because many people said, the car is so great. You did such a great job. They really went crazy about the car. Her doing the BMW car at that time was really a wonderful symbol of um, Africa, you know, sort of coming into its own. The people are happy. All the people who see it are happy. When they see this car, their hearts are simply filled with joy. Back to Europe. Up until this point, BMW had asked artists to participate in the BMW Art Car Series. Not with this car. The artists approached BMW, and BMW gladly said yes. No wonder, because the Art Car Series in its second decade was already somewhat established in the art world. The result? The most figurative car that there ever was in the series. 1992. Zandro Chia is one of Italy's most important contemporary painters, yet he is keen on adding an art car to his works. Chia is a car fan. He was one of the very few who came to us. When he starts working on the car, Chia has already had the design ready in his head for years. After only three days, his work is done. I try to be as respectful as possible towards the, 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 the shape of the car. Kia paints the whole car with bodiless and genderless faces. It's the car which looks at the viewer. His goal was to create a car that was moving even when it was standing still. And well, the eyes are indeed looking at you. You see the beauty of this car and you see yourself reflected in this beauty choice. You're, you're a part of it. BMW was eager to work with this very famous pop art artist. He already painted as a child and is known as one of the most influential artists of the 20th century today. His motto is, I paint what I like, where I like, and when I like it. This is also the motto for this fabulous art car. The 14th art car is designed by a much desired candidate of BMW, but David Hockney took his time with his decision. He didn't make a fuss, but he thought about it thoroughly. I kept saying no because I wasn't sure. You know, what to do. Well, we did want someone of Hockney's caliber, with Hockney's influence on the history of art, to do the car. So we didn't give in that quickly. When Hockney, who is mentioned in the same breath as the swinging 60s, eventually made his decision, he engaged with the subject for one year. 
wasn't really about intricate uh, little painting on it, the surface. And I thought, well, what would be good would be to perhaps draw the car. He made visible what normally is assumed hidden on the inside of the car in putting it onto the mantle. You look into the car through the car body. This represents the engine, as you can see, and tires and lamps and seats and things. On the back seat, the painter is drawing a very personal motif, a Dachshund. The artist took a liking to dogs. He loves them dearly. In this period, he always painted his Dachshund. Hockney sees it differently. My dogs actually would not sit in the back seat. They would always sit on the front seats. Nineteen ninety-nine. Finally, BMW returns to the twenty-four hour race of Le Mans, and along with it, the fifteenth BMW art car. Originally, the artist was supposed to create a car based on a model from the previous year. But when she was touring BMW, she discovered this particular race car and said, it's either this car or no car at all. We were very happy to comply with her request. In 1999, exactly 20 years after the last art car for Le Mans, BMW had another race car design, this time by Jenny Holzer. It's not what you'd consider a natural fit. Jenny Holzer, Jenny Holzer is one of the most critical contemporary artists you can think of. Jenny Holzer seeks publicity with provoking sentences or mundane idioms. When people come by, I want them to think about the content. I don't want them to wonder whether it's art or much less good or bad art. I want them to think about the subject matter. That's what the artist would like to achieve with her art car. She has the car body lacquered and covered with some fluorescent banners. Sounds easy. It is really backbreaking work until it's applied perfectly to the car because it needs to be done to perfection. Not all of the sentences on the car are new. The artist had them all published previously, but now with a different projection surface also comes room for new interpretations. She's putting a message in front of a very unlikely and highly receptive audience. Well, at least here, the whole sense of the race is for once questioned. Yeah, I tried to design the car and choose the text so that it made sense for a racing public. And I wanted to choose text that would at least make people laugh or maybe be a little anxious. <laughs> and thus provokes ambivalent reactions. But at least this year, the other BMW wins the Le Mans race. I have to say, for me, it was love at second sight. My impression is that, in her way, Jenny made it work nicely. I just didn't like the patter. This is completely embarrassing, but I like my car. <laughs> I have to say, I think it's a good-looking car. The 16th BMW art car was based on a prototype like this, the H2R, a race car running on hydrogen. This is about sustainable mobility. A panel of international curators decided on an artist who would work on this project very intensively. The result? A break within the art car series. For the 16th art car, BMW took on the second to non international artist, Olafur Eliasson very gifted artist who is very unusually good. Eliasson primarily deals with the physical phenomena of nature. His art is baffling, overwhelming and amazing. So is his car, the H2R. A car solely running on hydrogen, 12 cylinders, 300 kilometers an hour fast. A cornerstone in the search of enduring mobility and the art car also should become something extraordinary. Olafur Eliasson is not a painter. Olafur Eliasson doesn't paint cars. The Danish artist has dealt intensively with the subject of mobility for almost three years. I had access to all the science knowledge and the machinery and everything that BMW had. The result was an ice car. This means that the car is at this point at least 
frozen. And frozen, of course, is like kind of suspended. It doesn't move. It's like kind of cold. Eliasson replaces the car body with a framework of small metal plates and sprays it with a thousand liters of water at freezing temperatures. A real radical but also contemporary attitude. It sounds typical of him, which is to reinvent the wheel, literally, and to make it more poetic. Eliasson's aim? We all need to recognize that our mobility behavior results in global warming. I do think that art uh, can change things, but I doubt that art can change the world, but I do think that art has a kind of a causal, cause and effect place in the world. When one of the most important artists on the planet wants to do a BMW art car, we just can't say no. This artist wanted to be part of the pantheon in which Liechtenstein, in which Warhol, Stella and Rauschenberg already had a place. 35 years after the very first art car was created, the BMW art car series comes full circle with this race car. It races at the 24-hour race in Le Mans in 2010 and receives standing ovations at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. 2010. The 17th art car is designed by the probably hottest and best paid contemporary artist of the world, Jeff Koons. Jeff extends the boundaries of pop art. He's the sort of um, the Warhol of the present day. The pressure on the artist is high. He's asked to and wants to create a unique piece of art. For me to have the opportunity to make a car participate in this tradition is an honor. With Jeff Koons, the art car returns to its roots. A pop art artist is designing a race car for Le Mans. There's a lot of power under that hood and I want to just kind of go with it and I want to transcend and let my ideas of, of what it means to be able to contribute to this uh, transcend with the car. Well, Jeff was tremendously interested in the power underneath the hood of the car, in the raw energy of a race car. In preparation, Coons himself even goes onto the racetrack. This was like being slammed up against a wall, you know, you really feel it. Kuhn's M3 GT2 is a feast for the senses. It's composed of flashes, graphics of light and comical elements. He picked very fancy and colorful colors. Uh, he still wanted it to retain that aggressiveness, that edge that goes with racing. He said he ne has never seen a car which uh, uh, gets him so much. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you... Yeah. <laughs> I'm really very proud of the art car. I think that it deals with the really important uh, vitality of life and life energy. And it's about being up against challenges and forces and to just keep pushing.